have at this table the folks from Musical Masterworks. Thank you very much for being here. President Alden Murphy, Artistic Director Edward Aaron, also a cellist. And good to have you in this country so that we could do this show. You've been traveling the world. Yes, part of the job, I guess. It is. Let's talk to the folks about Musical Masterworks. What is it, Alden? Musical 25 years old. 25 years old. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary this year, which none of us who started this 25 years ago can believe. Um, it's a chamber music series in Old Lyme, Connecticut. Ten concerts a year, five concert weekends. The demand, we were initially five concert weekends, and the demand was, was five concerts, sorry, on Saturday nights. The demand was so great, we uh, added a back-to-back -back Sunday concert, which is a repeat. So now we have five concert weekends, ten concerts. Almost all are sold out. Uh, Sunday is very popular now. And we have Ed Aaron as our fabulous How did you artistic get into the director. Mix? Well, I uh, first played on the series. I was invited um, by my predecessor, Charles Wadsworth, legendary uh, impresario in the chamber music world and pianist. Uh, he invited me in 2005 to play on the series and uh, we got to talking and uh, discovered that we were kindred spirits uh, in um, many realms, uh, including uh, making chamber music programs and, and delivering them. And uh, so he, in 2007, uh, took me on as his associate artistic director. And that started uh, you on your path. And that started me on my path two years uh, with Charles, and then he retired. and. Uh, and I was left with this marvelous concert series. So what is it about chamber music that people are loving? You're 25 years old, you started in Old Lyme, now you are working in the First Congregational Church, is that correct? That's right. What are the acoustics like there? Well, Ed should speak more to that it's as a musician. She's uh, yielded to you. Yes. Of all Take the it. places uh -huh. I go to play concerts, the acoustic of that particular space, the First Congregational Church in Old Lyme, uh, is my favorite to play in. It, uh, the acoustic is incredibly clear uh, so that there's a sense of intimacy. You can hear every little detail there, um, but there's also uh, just a very warm resonance to the sound. And the thing about chamber music is that each participant in chamber music um, has his or her, her own voice. Um, and so to be able to hear every detail and uh, to, to be in such close proximity with the audience um, makes it um, a particularly special venue. What is it about chamber music that is so popular and why are you selling out and why are you adding dates? How has this grown over 25 years, Alden? I think partly because of the venue and certainly because of the quality of our musicianship with Ed and his colleagues and also with the musicians that Charles brought in for the 17 years. He was our artistic director prior to Ed being with us. Uh, the hall is seats about 300 people, which is intimate but big enough so we can get a crowd in there. And there really is an intimacy. The crowd is close enough that they are part of the performance. There's actually a physicality to chamber music. Mm -hmm. And we have audience members who come and claim their seats in the first row. We do not sell assigned seats. So you come and you get your seat about an hour it's ahead of time. It's civilized. It's very mm -hmm. civilized, but it, there's a little bit of a push and shove, like yes. that's really my seat there. So people sort of have the seats they're used to. And people are within three feet of these musicians. You feel them breathing. You feel the tempo and the pulse with them. You see them communicating through eye contact. You see them communicating through their body. It's a whole incredible form of communication. You get sprayed with sweat. You oh, get, it's, uh, yes, you get sprayed with sweat. You might, well, that's a, a lot <laughs> Physical, of yes. So what are you bringing to, what, what is your artistic direction bringing to Musical Masterworks? You know, programming has been a passion of mine my whole life. And, You're not that old. Um, <laughs> it depends on who you ask, I suppose. I'm 38. Uh, a and, child. Mm. And um, I grew up in a musical family. Uh, my father is a violist. He played at the Metropolitan Opera um, and the Cincinnati Symphony before that. My mother, who passed away in 1998, was the executive director of Carnegie Hall. And wow. so the combination of the two of them um, was a, a great inspiration for what I do. Uh, the musicianship of my father and uh, the organizational um, skills and uh, 
the art of programming um, was so central uh, to our household. And so um, I, I really love my role with Musical Masterworks of putting together programs, five of them each year, performed in duplicate, as Alden said, uh, and um, really taking this audience on a journey each time. Um, and I tend uh, to avoid gimmicks and, and things like that, but rather put pieces together that I think um, will just take us on that really special journey uh, so people will be entertained and, and also transported by this music and, and steeped in, in the real art. They get to lose music. themselves for a little while. Let's while hope, there. yeah. Alden, as president, where do you see musical masterworks going 25 years down the road? From now. <laughs> yeah. So how, how has it evolved? It has evolved. Uh, it was slow at first. We have a story about in our first concert, which was a Renaissance madrigal group. This, this organization, I'll backtrack a little bit, started, believe it or not, with the improbable beginning of a production of Gilbert and Sullivan's Mikado. There you go. Mikado, chamber music. It, it did travel and morph through the support of the Florence Griswold Museum in, in town. We started a mini concert series. We found Charles Wadsworth, who agreed to play with us. Then it really sort of took off. And it really is perfect for a small community because it's through word of mouth. We didn't have the internet when we started. Mm -hmm. God knows how we all marketed things you know, 25 years ago, but we did. Um, and it has grown that way. We also are committed to bringing good music and chamber music to schools and to young people. So not only do we have our, our formal chamber music concerts at the Congregational Church, we have an outreach program in the school system of New London. And we have a young people's concert, which Ed and his colleagues produce, elucidating the joys of music for families. So we're trying to you're growing it. We're trying to grow it from you know the top down, from both in right. age and in people's familiarity with music. Chamber music is accessible, and that's one thing that Charles and Ed, in their wonderful informal presentation style, have let people know. What they do is uh, Charles is style was really sort of like an informal talk at a barbecue, actually. But he would be talking about Mozart and Mahler and Bach and revealing stories about them and personal stories. And you think, I can absorb this. Mm -hmm. This is part of my world. And we want chamber music to be more accessible to more people in just that way. And on that note, I think we should hear you play, Edward. Okay. Thank you for being on. You're going to play us out, and we're just going to listen right. to you. Play Here's the, the prelude of J.S. Bach, Suite Number no. One, G Major. Thank you so much.
skip right ahead in the nice ride The harder we look, the less you can see Don't you know, you know, you know that you 